My name is Doris Hong, and this testimony is about giving to the Lord. In 2012, I retired from my job of 37 years. Thank God. So I decided to change my iPhone 4 to a Samsung smartphone, thinking that I would have plenty of free time to learn how to use a new handphone. My thought was to quickly sell off the iPhone 4, since it's still quite a sought after item, and they may still fetch a good price. Migrating from one phone model to another is quite a challenge, particularly for old folks like me. However, I managed to copy, export all contacts, messages, photos to the new Samsung phone. After that, I deleted everything from the iPhone 4. But strangely, I was not able to delete the photos and photo albums. I seek the help from YouTube as well as my tech-savvy nephews. I even hand over the iPhone 4 to one of them but he returned it saying he could not do it and doesn't know why. I was really disappointed because I can't sell this iPhone with all my photos in it. Frustrated, I put it aside and put off the idea of even selling it. In 2015, that is two and a half years after retirement, my ex-company rehired me with fairly good perps, plus I was granted a four-day week work at my request. This I consider is God's favour. Supposedly for a three months contract, I ended up working for 16 months. I reckon this is another God's great favour because none of my ex-colleagues whom who have retired before me were ever rehired. I was so grateful to God for His provisions. So when I received my first pay packet, I decided to bless someone in addition to my regular tidings. The Holy Spirit prompted me to bless a wheelchair-bound brother, so I did. A few weeks later, my sister-in-law texts me if I have an iPhone 4 for sale as her helper's friend is interested to purchase one and is willing to pay $230 for it. I told her that I have one but I can't delete the photos in it. She suggested I try again. So I tried and selected settings and with two more clicks, I was able to delete all the photos and photo albums. That was really amazing. Till today, I still cannot figure out why I can't do that before. Because I have kept this handphone for two and a half years. Happily, I sold it for $230. And the blessings I gave to that brother was only $270. Later, I found that this iPhone 4 was only worth about $80 to $100 if I had sold it at a second-hand shop. Praise God. God is really a Jehovah Jireh. Proverbs Chapter 13, verse 9 says, Honour the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of your crops. Hold so true in my walk with the Lord all these years, that as I give his kingdom, give to his kingdom's work and the needy, God has never shortchanged me and at times blessed me with more than what I gave. As a young Christian in my early 20s and 30s, I don't tie at all, but just an offering here and there. It was not until I heard a series of powerful sermons on tidings and offerings by Pastor Derek, I then seriously decided to tie 10% on my gross salary. As my salary increases, my tidings increase. I also pledge a regular contribution to a Christian organisation that cares for the handicapped, and I supported my missionary sister for years. I've never defaulted on my tidings and giving to these causes. Praise the Lord. Another testimony may Above testimony may seem rather insignificant, but what is most significant, at least for me, is that by 2009, I managed to purchase and co-own a house in Perth with my sister, who, who now lives there. Two years later, in 2001, I purchased this four-room HDB flat. Both these properties are fully paid without any bank loan, not a single cent for bank interest. I'm amazed and grateful that this is even possible because I'm only a single income earner. Now God kept his promises and praise God. I hope I'm not sounding uh, boastful, but I just want to boast about Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Continue with Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Then your bumps will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. I'd like to end this testimony with verses from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. 
I also want to add Proverbs 11, 24 to 25, which says, One person gives generous, one person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. I give God all the glory.